Hello and welcome to my Data Glove for Simulation project presentation. Um, I first took interest in biomimetic hands, shaking the 3D printed hand of a robot with a connect for a face that kind of looked like this on the Plymouth Open Day and it was amazing. <laughs> um, doing research in my first few years of university showed me what kind of avenues one could go down in this field. Robotic prosthetics enable people with disabilities to have access to a life-changing tool, especially now 3D printing is more accessible. And more dexterous user-controlled robot hands are getting more advanced, with some using AI to improve their performance over time, and some even copying the structure of the tendons in a human arm. These fields of engineering have always interested me, and I'd like to think the complexity and level of control for more dexterous research hands will benefit the improvement of robotic prosthetics. Picture top left is an open bion bionics robotic prosthetic, which inspired me with robotics that ch can change a person's life. And bottom right is Jeff Bezos exploring a hands-on approach for automation with the advanced robotic, a shadow robot dexterous hand. This project is more tailored towards the bottom right category, human computer interface, capturing real world data and using it to control a simulated hand. Due to the pandemic, options were limited. So this approach to the project was most applicable under the circumstances, but I'm still happy that it was possible to do a project like this around my chosen topic. The commercial hand bought to initially test the uh, simulation came with two demo Arduino programs, one for reading the flexion of the fingers and one with Bluetooth and gyroscopic capabilities. The latter wasn't helpful in the scope of the project at the moment, but could be used in future projects or improvements and the former was initially used for transferring information from the Arduino to the simulation. It used a function that took a running average for each finger and put it on a scale between 500 and 2500, which didn't work reliably and gave us bugs. In the end, any code that came with the bought, uh, bought glove was discarded and a much simpler program was used for writing the task. There are a few different approaches to transferring information between the board and the computer. Programs like MATLAB could have been used to create a CSV file containing an array which Capellia Sim could then read to find the joint angles at any given moment. A simplified version of this was used that printed the joint angles over serial, which could then be then read by the robot hand itself from within the child script manipulator. This worked the first time it was used, but it wasn't known until weeks after the fact. It didn't occur to me that Capellia Sim and Putty, a software used for reading serial input, couldn't communicate with the Arduino at the same time, meaning large amounts of time were lost debugging a working program but it's okay, that's just how it goes. <laughs> the chronological start to any problems with the project was finding a suitable model for the simulated hand. There weren't any example models within the simulation software that was suitable to the needs of the project, i.e. the five fingers. This meant that op the options were to find an appropriate model online and use the SEL files to build the simulated hand, or the hand model could be made in Fusion 360 manually. It was difficult to produce a model I was proud of that was accessible, so a viable anthropomorphic hand was found online and converted into a mesh. But the complexity of the med, the mesh led to an ongoing issue with the joints and general speed of the simulation. It also made it difficult to create an accurate kinematic model and find the Denovit, Denovit Hartenberg parameters, which could have enabled the calculation of the manipulator configuration needed for, uh, to give a desired end effect location. Once all this is done, and the model and communications were sorted. Programming the hand itself took time while learning to how to code within the Capellia Sim child script writer. This is the Banggood data glove and uses an Arduino Uno houses with, housed with five potentiometers, a gyroscope, an accelerometer, and a Bluetooth module for use with other products from this website. It can operate off a 7.4 volt LiPo battery or be connected via micro USB. It uses levers coupled with rings that are worn above the knuckles to rotate these potentiometers so the movement of the fingers gets translated into different resistance values that get read through the ADC pins. The straps attach at the fingers as well as across the palm and below the wrist. It seems to be made for smaller hands, but it still works pretty well. There are a few issues with how this part connects the pinky to the lever and the coupling's a bit off, seeing as when this slides down here, it's hard to return the pinky to its original, um, original position. The same goes for the thumb, as well as it only capturing one axis of movement. But despite this limited motion, it's actually very useful. And it mostly has to be used down like this, as the gravity pulling it down off your hand actually affects the way you move the potentiometers. So now let's get it running. 
as you can see here, it's pretty responsive. The ring finger is slightly too responsive, it's very excited. But other than that, the hand works very well. Again, the thumb motion is slightly limited. And I actually struggle to move a lot of my fingers on their own at all without moving the rest of my fingers like there you go. I don't know what's wrong with me. This is the dates club that I produce for this project. Again, it uses an Arduino Uno and five flex sensors for each fingers coupled to a potential divider circuit with a 10K pull-up resistor. Each flex sensor has a resistance of about 30K when relaxed and 90K when flexed to its full range. The sensors are held in place at the end by zip ties and they're fixed in place at the tip. The zip ties are there to ensure that they can travel along this track without pulling on and constructing, um, obstructing these parts. So now they can kind of slip in and out whilst being flexed, which is nice. There's also a ring here that keeps all the wires uh, down because when these are up, it affects the, like so, like seen here, it can affect the value of the sensors when my fingers are relaxed. I love how it looks. It looks like something Iron Man would make if I captured him in my basement because there's not much there um, <laughs> and it works really well. I'll demonstrate. Again, it works the same as the other hand. It's just as responsive. The range of motion looks a little bit more um, varied because of the way each flex sensor works. I feel like the, the variation in how it can flex affects the variation in the movement compared to with the other glove. However, you do get more kind of freedom moving in this glove and each sensor is coupled nicely to your fingers. It works really well. Um, the hand model, again, the ring finger is a little bit excited, but other than that, it works really well. The only time it doesn't work is when you flex your fingers like this, because although your first knuckle is bent, the uh, rest of the knuckles aren't. So it doesn't actually show that kind of flexion, if you see what I mean. This is a close-up of the simulation um, connected to the commercial Banggood hand. Um, I'm using this so that I can twist the pots individually to get more of an accurate sense of how the fingers work individually as well as together. The first thing one may notice is this ring finger and how crazy it's going. And I believe the reason that is, is due to the model itself and the mesh. So when I created the model, I essentially extracted a mesh from the STL files and this created a kind of triangular looking net over the model. And I decimated this to try and reduce the amount of triangles so the shape would be simpler. However, it still came to quite complex, which is a problem because the physics, the physics engine essentially struggles to deal with shapes this complex. It likes to work with simple, simplified shapes or convex hulls. So this was a little bit too much for it. The other joints don't seem to mind. However, this is one issue that I can't get rid of without changing the model of the hand. I'd like to make my own model of the hand so that I could 3D print it and obviously make it in real life. But this is the precursor for that kind of project. Here we have the fingers closing. The fingers do interact with each other and it causes shake. However, with feedback, this would be able to be fixed, and when you stop the contact, they return to normal, obviously. Closing a fist is a bit of a problem because these two fingers um, actually cross with each other once they're bent a certain level, which is a little bit problematic, but this they don't seem to mind once they're flexed or released, although they do shake a lot. In its current state, the project would need some further development before fulfilling its potential, but once a more advanced stage, what well, once a more advanced stage could be used anywhere from industry to recreation. The concept of this project forms the basis of any teleoperated control method using a data glove, such as a surgical robot or disaster recovery robot. It could also be used in conjunction with feedback so that the data from a worker's glove can be analyzed and used to help the worker or show useful information. This is already being used in the automotive and aviation industry to help improve workplace performance and efficiency. This sort of technique is also used to teach AI how to carry out automated tasks when the AI will learn from the physical data of a human performing said task. Furthermore, virtual reality and augmented reality have been gaining increased popularity since the Nintendo Power Glove in 1989 to large tech companies like Samsung, Sony, and Microsoft 
backing projects such as powerful new VR glasses, headsets and controllers which are all commercially available today. Currently, there aren't many off-the-shelf data cards for sale, with more expensive models costing upwards of thousands of pounds coming through the inquiry from, from large companies. This caliber of glove is also available from VR headsets and sets in general used for games, but they're generally designed to be integrated with pre raw software. The glove bought in this project came to around £60, whereas the total cost of making a data glove came to slightly less. The money could be saved by bulk buying parts from cheaper vendors or before the pandemic. Both alternatives for the glove are far more cost effective to achieve the same task as a commercial glove right now. Far, a further development can improve the performance and range of motions of gloves that, can capture, that they could capture without adding extra cost whilst greatly increasing performance. Thank you for listening and thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing the project. Uh, it was great and I'd like to continue it hopefully next year by either creating my own robot hand to control or increasing the control on my glove, adding feedback, things like that. That would be great. Awesome, have a good day.